Let's hear from the coach. This is Behind the Beard with Bobby Smirniotis, Forge FC head coach and sporting director. Now, the woman who takes us there, here's Mackenzie Barwell on the Forge Audio Network. All right, we will get started here. Episode three of Behind the Beard. I am joined by head coach and sporting director, Coach Bobby Smirniotis. Bobby, thank you again for joining me today, taking the time from Montreal and on a game day. How are you? I'm doing well. Always a pleasure. How was the travel yesterday? What's it like traveling with the team? Well, this one is a, is a simple one. When you look at all the travel that uh, we go through in the league and traveling across the country, you know, taking a 45-minute uh, flight over to Montreal is uh, is quite simple. <laughs> You're right. Settled, You're right. In, settled in pretty easy. You know, I guess in comparison to some other trips, it probably wasn't that bad. No, the trip to the airport and uh, hanging around is much longer than the actual uh, flight itself. Yeah, so that's, that's true. That's what makes it long. I picture you sitting in like first class and then them walking by you to, in, to economy and you're just kind of like minding your own. <laughs> it, de- it definitely doesn't work like that. <laughs> you're like, I wish, I wish it worked like that. We all sit together as a team. <laughs> Okay, Bobby, let's get into our conversation about the Canadian Championship. I want to look at the tournament as a whole before we get into the match tonight. Um, It's particularly unique because it brings together not only the pros, but the semi-pros from League One Ontario. We have also BC, the PLSQ, and also soon, I believe, uh, League One Alberta. Wanted to ask you how important, or maybe the better question is, what do you think that adds to Canadian professional soccer to have a competition like that that brings together all of these players and all of these teams. Yeah, I think it's important when you look at the the domestic cup competitions around the world. It brings together everyone from uh, from all levels of of the game. You know, in most countries, you'll have a first division, second division, third division with promotion right. relegation. Um, here, it's a little bit different with the uh, with the different leagues. Um, but I think it's uh, it's important. You know, once the CPL came along in twenty nineteen. Uh, it expanded the the championship, and I always thought it was important to bring in the, the League One Canada, let's call it, leagues between Ontario, uh, PLSQ, yeah. and now BC. And I think that just increases the stature of the game in all the different uh, communities and cities uh, around the country. Yeah, a thousand percent. And, you know, like you said, considering considering a CPL team has yet to win this title, what do you think that could do for the league as a whole and I say that not only because that secures you a spot in the CONCACAF Champions League, but do you think that there is some recognition to be had for the CPL as a highly professional space with teams that can compete with um, MLS clubs, for example? Yeah, I think this being the fifth year, that's already been established. Um, mm-hmm. That uh, although, uh, let's say, the budgets are, are much bigger with uh, with some of our MLS teams or all of the MLS teams, um, that the actual gap in uh, in the play is is not that uh, significant. So I think we've already done that. Uh, of course, winning is always a good thing, and it'll be great for the first club that's able to do it. Um, we hope it's uh, it's us, um, but it's also not the the only factor that says you know uh, that legit- legitimizes things. You know, I think we're already yeah. past that point, and and what we'll see in the future is we'll we won't talk so much about the the CPL against the MLS team, but it's more going to be about. Uh, the challenge between two teams to go on to the next round and the, and trying to win a trophy. And I think that's what will become more normal in the next couple of yeah, years. Yeah. What do you think it will take to kind of establish that conversation, you know, and not really see it as a hierarchy, but more so as just two equal teams going into one tournament? Yeah, I think next year when when you'll see CPL teams, uh, uh, Canadian MLS teams, both playing in in Champions League competition, um, because that's the reality. You know, yeah. CPL will yeah. have two teams competing in Champions League with a possibility of a third one um, through this event. Then on the continental stage, uh, you're all equal. You're playing mm-hmm. in the in the continent's top competition. Doesn't matter which uh, which league you come from, and I think uh, that will be a a major difference in in just looking at it from there. So if a CPL team can uh, can win this Canadian Championship, that'll put three teams uh, from the CPL into in the Champions League, and I think that's a massive boost uh, for the league and for the clubs themselves. Board fans know what the stories have been when you guys have met CF Montreal in the past. That first matchup being the eleven long rounds of penalties, and then the outcome last year in Montreal. What do you expect to see from them tonight, and how are you guys approaching this game? Yeah, I expect to see the best out of them. 
Um, you know, they're not having uh, the best start to, to their season. Um, this is a competition for, for all teams, including us. That's be your best in four games and you're in Champions League. Uh, right. So I expect to to see their best lineup and uh, their best foot forward uh, tonight. And on the flip side, uh, you know, we not only have to be good tactically, but our energy levels have to be high. You know, this is a game where we have to leave everything out there uh, physically um, on the pitch. And that's one thing uh, we're looking for. And, uh, you know, more often than not, or the majority of the time, that's what we're doing in, in big matches as a team. Um, we have players with experience in these types of matches, and that's what we're asking from them uh, this evening. It's just uh, when we come out of this match that we've given everything we have on the pitch, uh, take tactics and all of those game plans aside, um, the physical component has to be hard for us. Like you said, CF Montreal not having the best start to their season thus far. They're coming off of two regular season losses. Do you think that plays a factor in matches like this? To be honest, uh, no. I no. think uh, this is totally a different uh, different competition, different mindset. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, you could be confident of, uh, of many wins. Um, but this is 90 minutes of, uh, of pressure football. Uh, you win, you go on. You lose, you're done. Um, you know, there is no other game without uh, without taking care of business here. So I think on the flip side, you know, when you're maybe not in the in the best form for any team, whether that's us or, or Montreal, um, you know, you know, this is a game that can that can change your path a little yeah. bit. You really create a good atmosphere amongst your group. So I think that's what we're going to see tonight in in both of the teams. It's it's two teams that obviously want to win, but of course, none of the teams want to lose on that pitch. Yeah, it's win or go home. And I mentioned the penalties earlier with games that are formatted like this. We tend to focus, I think, on the players nerves because it can go to penalties and who knows, maybe that'll go 11 rounds. But what kind of nerves does that bring to you as a coach? And how do you prepare your players for situations like that? Yeah, you, you prepare throughout the year. That's the most important thing. You, you don't make it a focal point of the week coming up to games like this and so on. You have to make it a regular occurrence amongst your players. Um, so when you come into the situation, it's as normal as can be for what is a, a little bit of a pressure uh, situation. As for us, uh, the coaches, uh, we know who we want to to step up. Uh, it's something we have. And, and, you know, once it goes there, it's just a matter of, of execution. And You're really right. a yeah. lot of time that it's your playing let. You don't know who's going to who's going to come out on top because in the end, somebody's going to miss. So you just got to sit back. Uh, let the guys do what they, they need to do and uh, hopefully it turns out in your favor in the end yeah you're right and I've seen you guys prepare throughout the whole season almost every practice ends in a penalty shootout that's my favorite part to watch like I'd be lying if I said that it wasn't the case there you go Bobby thank you so much again I'm gonna wrap it up there and good luck tonight thank you very much Mackenzie this has been Behind the Beard with Mackenzie Barwell and Bobby Smyrniotis if you like what you heard please like follow subscribe comment and share now, did you record it? <laughs> enjoy enjoy the so game. Much.